Hi, and happy Wednesday. I have two questions that I'm going to answer today because they are about flying. And it's May 25th when I'm recording this. We're getting into summer in the United States, and there's a lot of people that are going to be traveling. I know I have some upcoming flights, so I wanted to, to answer these two questions. The first one is the person's looking for some help regarding anticipation that comes with flying. The thought of having a panic attack on the flight gets me anxious the entire week before flying. And I think to me, there's even just some keys there where it's like you're recognizing, wow, I'm feeling anxious even before I'm on the flight, you know, and, and that's this, that's what happens. We have thoughts, which are very well-meaning. The brain's like, um, I don't want to feel anxious on a plane. I don't want to have a panic attack on the plane. If I picture it, maybe I'll figure out a way to, to make it happen or how to better handle it. But what happens is then we're just at our home and we're already imagining having a panic attack on the flight and we're feeling that uncomfortableness. We're feeling that anxiety. And that lets us know we're in our home. We're actually not on the plane. So it's not the plane. It's our thoughts about the plane. Oh, it's not the flight. It's my thoughts about the flight. I can even feel that without being on the flight. And, and I'm not just going to stop there because I think sometimes if people, oh, it's just our thoughts. It's like, well, how does that help me? <laughs> um, because it's not like the thoughts come in like black and white. What happens is when we have a thought, it gets brought to life by our consciousness. We really see it like played out with 3D. Maybe we see a time that we had a panic attack before and we remember how uncomfortable it was and how scary. And we, we can kind of feel like we're reliving it. Or maybe we... It wasn't that bad, but we imagine, well, what about this time? And so we have the thought of, what if I have a panic attack? And you're just sitting here, maybe in your, your chair or your, wherever you are in your house, and you're picturing you freaking out and being like, please land the plane. And you're like, oh, God, that's so horrible. Um, but what happens is when we're anticipating, we're, we're kind of just using the past, the memories, whether it's movies we've seen, whatever stuff we've concocted in our brain. But we're not leaving room for actually this infinite possibilities and for our wisdom and common sense, which we all have just to show up at the precise moment we need it. So if and when you started feeling panicky and if and when you had a panic attack on the plane, your wisdom, this greater intelligence that is inside every one of us, that heals your bones, that heals your cuts, that helps you bounce back from a flu and a cold and grew you and if you're a parent, grew your child, the same thing that grows plants. So this, this greater intelligence is just waiting to break through at the precise moment you need it. So you don't even need to use your brain. So all this anticipation, it's like we're going to our memories or just we're using our brain. And our brain is so limited compared to this expansiveness that grows babies and creates planets and zebras and chameleons and tides. Like that wisdom is like, I've got your back if you have a panic attack. You don't even need to think about it. You know, and I wonder if there has been times when you can think of when something has happened and you've just sprung into action, you're like, I didn't even think of it. Um, so that's the first thing, if and when, whatever you're scared about, in this instance, a panic attack, if and when it happens, future you will take care of it. You know, and that greater intelligence, it's, it's also, it, it's like, that's the same thing that like reaches out your hand if, you, if you're a parent, like to, to catch your kid, you know, that you don't even think about. I know I saw this TikTok and it was like dad rescues and it was like babies almost toppling over and dads grabbing them with one hand. Like they weren't thinking about it. They weren't even using their brain. It was this wisdom and common sense. Another thing that came through for me actually, so in a, one of my recent groups, a woman was talking about she was on a flight and there was turbulence and she just hated it. And she was holding on to the woman seated next to her and they were both just really scared and really uncomfortable. And then she noticed the woman next to them was crying, just sobbing. And instantly, the woman that was sharing the story, she was snapped out of it. And she, cause she, she was like, oh my gosh, she's suffering more than me. And she went over to comfort her. And she said, oh, that happened again and again. You know, and we didn't have, she didn't think her way through that. She wasn't like, now stop panicking and help. You know, so when we anticipate, we go to our brain, we're not leaving room for that wisdom. And when it's unnecessary, and then we're just suffering that week before. So I share all of that. And also, some of it is 
accepting there might be still a little bit of anticipation anxiety before a flight. But what you can do is not add on to it with your thinking. Um, so it can be there, you know, because it's not like you have to be like, well, now I've heard this and I'm going to be completely peaceful and I'm never going to think about it the week before because that's not what I'm saying. But it's recognizing that your brain might be like, hey, and you can hear it, you know, and then just know, you know, remember everything I've said or if any insights popped up for you and that thought can come and it can go all on its own because that's how thoughts work. Um, you know, and also I know that sometimes I, I have anticipation anxiety, but it, it's so different than what it used to be because I no longer think there's something wrong with it or it's a call to action or like, yeah, I'm going to ruminate about it. I'm going to figure out a plan. I just know if I have an event coming up, especially for me, if it's something I haven't done before. So this might seem silly, but, um, my son, it was teacher appreciation week. And so I had volunteered to get 40 little Jamba juices, this juice place in Los Angeles, Jamba juices and bring them to the teachers. And because I'd never been to this Jamba juice near here, I've never picked up 40 and delivered them like by the end of the day, my brain was like, I don't know how this is going to go. And it was funny because I actually had like a nightmare <laughs> the night before that I had ordered it and paid for it. This was truth. I ordered the Jamba juices and I paid for them. And, um, and in my nightmare, I went to get them because I needed to coordinate the drop off. So it was there for the teachers enough to stay cool and they could get them for their ride home. And the employees were like, we don't have your order. And it was all getting messed up. It was, you know, how, how dreams and nightmares go. Um, and so before getting the juices, <laughs> I know this seems so small, but I, I know a lot of you will also get it. My body felt a little weird. Like my stomach felt weird. I just kind of felt like because I wanted it to go well. I wanted the orders to be there and I wanted to bring them in time for the teachers. And um, so I had that, but I also just didn't add on to it. Like it was there. I had some thinking and my stomach felt a little weird and it kind of felt like a big deal, like the juices. <laughs> but I didn't ruminate about it. I just let it be there. And I guess I say this in, I've made peace that sometimes I, I anticipate things before they happen, but it's maybe like a 5% anticipation compared to when it was. And I would actually like really entertain these thoughts. And then also be like, Ugh. like I accept a little bit of this non peace, a little bit of this anticipation. And then it doesn't consume me. It's like, yeah, I think about it and maybe feel it. And then it goes and I, and I get back in my life. Like I don't spend so much time in my thoughts. So I hope this was helpful. This one's going to be a little bit longer. Maybe I'm going to go into our next question. Um, so the next question is tips and tricks for in-flight relaxation or when an irrational thought pops up, what can I do or say to myself to come back to reality? And for this one, we're always going to get unproductive thoughts. And the thing is we never need to do anything. It's not the thoughts that get us into trouble, like quote unquote trouble, but it's our thoughts on the thoughts when we think, oh my gosh, I don't want this irrational thought. Like, what am I going to do? Um, or we take it really seriously and we think, why did I have that thought? Like, um, so about thoughts, they are totally neutral, um, until we give them meaning and, and thoughts flow all on their own. That was a huge thing for me to realize. Um, and it's also thoughts are not just like thinky thoughts. That's what, um, I just connected with this wonderful woman, Hannah Studley, and she was talking about thinky thoughts. And that's the thoughts that are like, you know what I mean? Like, what if I have a panic attack? But thought with a capital T also comes into form in like images where we might picture, picture, just we picture ourselves having a panic, panic attack. We have memories or things like that. There's, it doesn't have to be like words. Um, so thought comes, we, we feel it. And then it flows all on its own. Like when we don't care about something or it's not even a big deal, sometimes it even if you do care, cause you're like, Ooh, I need to, I need to order more toilet paper. Or I, I want to get that present. If we don't write it down and maybe this is just me, if we don't write it down, it's like flows out, you know? Um, but if we think, Ooh, I don't want to think of these thoughts, then they, then we un unintentionally give them more energy, give them more time and thoughts flow all on their own. So there's no tips and tricks because if I was to give you tips and tricks, 
you'd be going up into your intellect. <laughs> you'd be having more thoughts of like, okay, here's how I'm gonna get this thought to flow. When? You don't even need to. Any thought can pop in and it can go all on its own. You are one thought away from a whole new experience. And I don't like turbulence, but honestly, I don't have any flight anticipation, anxiety. I used to hate flying. Um, I don't, I, now I just don't think about flying as much. But on every flight that I've been on recently, there's been a little bit of turbulence. And when it happens, I sometimes like grab the person's hand. Usually it's my partner, but once it was a random woman and I was like, oh, sorry. And then I'm in it. I'm like, oh, I hate this. <laughs> and then it's over. Cause then, and then I just don't think about it as much. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot about turbulence. But I also, I, I have a different understanding of turbulence. And I also think what changed is somebody told me they like turbulence <laughs> and that turbulence is just kind of a bumps in the road for, for flight attendants. But sometimes when it happens, my, my like rational brain is not there and I'm like, oh, I hate it. But I shared that example of, then I don't add onto it with my thinking. The turbulence comes, it ends, my thoughts flow and I come back. Like we are, that was so huge for me when I, when I really saw that my thoughts flow all, all on their own and that I'm one thought away, like it's a new thought pops up. Ooh, would I ever have a sparkling water? Oh my gosh. I remember when I drank tomato juice on planes, like, would I like that again? Maybe with some peanuts, you know, oh, maybe a diet Coke. Like now my, I'm having new thoughts. I'm like, Ooh, I have a Coke zero downstairs. So I'm going to go on for more of this question. So the person had experienced derealization and depersonalization. And they wrote, my brain has convinced me that I am destined to feel the exact same way if I were ever to travel again. It has conditioned me to believe that I'll never be able to travel and be happy. Since when I've traveled previously, I've been 99% in my head. I love to travel and I hate that I feel this way. And that my brain convinces me that I'm destined to feel sad and like everything isn't real. And I'm finding myself putting so much pressure to be in the moment and have a good time that I feel sad and even more like I'm not in my body. And I just feel like I already hear so much wisdom. One that you're, that this person's like, oh, my brain, <laughs> you know, in that when you're saying your brain, it's like, oh, that there, that you're recognizing that maybe it's a liar, that your brain tells stories that aren't true. Like that's a story. And I also think like the, your brain probably hasn't convinced you hundred percent because if it did, you wouldn't write to me. You wouldn't ask this question if you were just like, oh yeah. I'm a hundred percent believing I'm always going to feel shitty when I fly and, uh, I'm always going to feel the exact same way that I travel. Like you wouldn't have, I don't think you would have reached out to me. And so to me, there's this, this knowing peace in you that, that can be trusted that you're like, wait, I don't think this has to be my flying experience. I don't think I have to suffer like this. I think my brain is a bit of a liar. <laughs> um, and it is, and it loves you. Our brains love us so much. And our brain's job is to keep us alive, not to keep us happy. And so in a weird way, it's like, let's just black and white. This is how it is. This is how it's going to be. But there is this seed of knowing in you that's like, hey, I do love to travel. And I think it's possible that I could feel more at ease traveling. And I also feel like I heard a lot of wisdom or I read a lot of wisdom in that the pressure that you're putting on yourself is not helpful you know, that you're putting so much pressure. Those are your words. Ugh. Be in the moment, have a good time that you feel even more sad, you know? And I think it does make me think of this quote that I love from Eckhart Tolle about accepting non-peace. Let me find it because he writes it better than me. Eckhart says, forgive yourself for not being at peace. The moment you completely accept your non-peace, your non-peace becomes transmuted into peace. Anything you accept fully will get you there, will take you to peace. And so when I was reading this, I was, it was making me think of that, of, sorry for a motorcycle, of what if you just took the pressure off? You know, where, and I guess I, I would point you within you know, within yourself, because I could say things and that's just me saying things, which I'm, I've been doing this whole time. But like what was coming up for me was, I guess being open to being surprised, 
And, and I know you said part of you loves to travel. This person that wrote the question said that her family lives in London and somebody can be like, mm, I might feel shitty traveling and it will get me to London. Like some of it is it's allowing your plane ride to unfold as it will. And it doesn't have to be like, I have to be happy all the time on the plane. Be happy, enjoy, ride. Like it can be, it can ebb and flow. You know, just as I shared, traveling is, is easy for me now. Am I 100% like at peace and present and not in my head? No. My brain still has irrational thoughts, um, you know, about, <laughs> I don't know, the plane going down or whatever. Like, but I no longer take them so seriously and I no longer think there's anything for me to do. You know, and I heard um, in, in this question some that it was like more thoughts. And what happens is when we have a lot of thinking and a lot of pressure, we get like shaken up, you know, um, like this, remembering the past, like, oh, I felt unreal. Is that going to happen again? Oh my gosh, I love to travel. Why can't I? What should I do? We can't really see clearly. But if this is our brain, you know, all these thoughts, we can't see clearly all these images. But when we set it down, we don't do anything at all. It settles all on its own. This made me think of a quote by Jack Pransky, and it is from his book, Somebody Should Have Told Us. And this is about one of my favorite analogies, the brass band and the flute. So Jack writes, our wisdom is always playing like a so soft flute in the background. The rest of our thinking is like a brass band. When the brass band is playing, we can't hear the soft flute. As soon as the, bre the band in our mind stops even for a second, the flute wisdom can be heard because it never stopped playing in the first place. A clear mind is something that happens within us. It is not something we do. Not only do we have a greater chance of hearing wisdom when the mind clears or calms, we also get a feeling of peace. We will always get unproductive or distracting thoughts. We can do no nothing about that. But these thoughts will pass all on their own unless we do something with them or make something of them. It is not our thoughts that get us into trouble. It is our thoughts about the thoughts that get us into trouble. What we're talking about here is our relationship to thinking. This relationship is far more important to our well being than the actual thoughts. Without realizing it, we give power to these thoughts. The alternative is to not take our thinking so seriously or to heart. Each is a different relationship with our thinking. What we are looking for appears automatically when our mind clears. There is really nothing we have to do to get where we want to be because we are already there. We are only in our own way with our very own thinking, interfering with our intrinsic state of wisdom and peace, using the thought, uh, using the gift of thought against ourselves. And I would add on innocently using this gift of thought against ourselves. So what I've been talking about with these two questions is that is this gift of thought that comes, gets brought to life by our consciousness, whether anticipating a panic attack, anticipating feeling derealization on a plane. And with this gift of thought, it comes and it flows all on its own. And that we don't need to plan for having a panic attack, for feeling unreal, that when our mind clears, which it always does, or even when our mind's not clear and in the midst of a panic attack, wisdom will guide us the right thing to do. And I set this down, it's still not completely clear. You know, and sometimes that it's, oh, having patience. You know, and when we get present, the mind kind of clears a lot faster, but sometimes when we're waiting and we're judging, um, <laughs> I know sometimes I've had people, go, where's that flute? <laughs> Which is very normal. But I hope these videos were helpful, or this video, <laughs> um, this discussion about flying and thoughts and wisdom and happy travels and a happy summer.